Hi there and welcome to PhD at Living. Today we're going to talk about napalm. As most of you know, I love talking about things that burn and boom, and this one's definitely no exception. The offshoot is it has a pretty interesting backstory too. Come on in. It's 1940. The Nazis are taking over large swaths of Europe and the US War Department's getting concerned. Flamethrowers have been around forever, but there are significant disadvantages to them. Gasoline's extremely flammable and burns great, but it burns too fast and is extremely inviscid, meaning it just slides off everything you squirt it at. Flamethrower application, not so good. You gotta build a better pancake, so where do you turn? For the war department, you go to Harvard and you find a professor named Louis Pfizer. Pfizer just finished the first synthesis of vitamin K, which obviously qualifies him for making implements of warfare. The goal? Make a substance that when mixed with gasoline turns into a gel that is sprayable, burns extremely well, and sticks to everything it touches. Originally, Pfizer was supposed to work in natural explosives, but the government switched him to poison gases. Pfizer, in his own words, expressed disappointment at the poison gas assignment, but took it anyway. In a lucky twist, while the chemical hoods were being installed in his lab, Pfizer had a lot of thinking time and became interested in incendiary compounds. Who wouldn't be, am I right? He asked his superiors if he could switch to gelled fuel formulations, and he was off. Over the next couple years, Pfizer and his assistants perfected the new gelling compound, entirely in secret. They tested the formulations on wooden frames and sometimes on the football field at Harvard, which I'm sure thrilled the administration. The best combination was a brown powder composed of the aluminum salts of naphthenic acids and palmitic acids. And with that, finally, let's go to the board. Naphthenic acids, as it turns out, are pretty tough to nail down. From the acid, we know it has a carboxylic functionality, so we're looking C double bond OOH, but naphthenic doesn't really mean anything, and there is no naphthene compound. Turns out it's from the petroleum industry, and it's a common name for any amount of monobasic carboxylic acids, meaning there's just one carboxylic functionality, with either a cyclopentyl five-membered ring or cyclohexyl six-membered ring, aliphatic combination. So the naphthene part here, the cyclopentyl or cyclohexyl, not aromatic, meaning not like benzene, pi pi stacking, doesn't matter. And then you just kind of take a couple of carbons and string them together, connect it to the carboxylic functionality, and you have an example of, but not the, naphthenic acid. But wait, there's more! It doesn't stop there because you don't need to have just a single cyclopentyl or cyclohexyl group somewhere connected to a carboxylic acid. You can have a cyclopentyl and a cyclohexyl group with the carboxylic or even some crazy three-ring fused honeycomb structure like this guy. It makes no sense, but that's okay. Just deal with it. Quick note here. Sometimes you'll see the ne in napalm attributed to naphthalene instead of naphthenic acids. While it kind of makes sense, it's similar to benzene, they're both aromatic hydrocarbon fuels, there's one big reason where it really doesn't jive with me. And that's because I can't really make an aluminum salt out of this. With the naphthenic acid, I can lose this proton on the carboxylic and make an anion to pair with that aluminum cation pretty darn easily. Well, because of the aromaticity, the resonance, the delocalization of the electrons, and the naphthalene, it's pretty happy where it sits, and I don't think it wants to make an aluminum salt. So, when you hear napalm, definitely naphthenic, probably not naphthalene. Moving on from the relative absurdity of the naphthenic acids, we get to palmitic acid, which, thankfully, only has one single definitive molecular formula. <sighs> I've drawn this a few different ways just to show you how a chemist might represent it differently, and you can see the longhand version here, this mid-length one with the methyl, the abbreviated methylenes, and the carboxylic here, or this bare-bones one of C16H32O2. The only thing we can glean from this one comes from the organic numbering rule, where the number of carbons multiplied by 2 plus 2 is a fully saturated hydrocarbon. We can see, however, that the 32 hydrogens are simply twice the number of the 16 carbons, not 2n plus 2, so we have one level of unsaturation, which appears in the form of that carboxylic group. Before I went to the board, I said napalm was composed of the aluminum salts of palmitic acids and naphthenic acids. So how do we get to the salt form? Well, it's really easy. You just delete this hydrogen here, which creates this very large polyatomic anion, and mix it with the aluminum cation. One wrinkle in here is aluminum likes to be in the 3 plus oxidation state, so we have to pair it with more palmitate anions or naphthenate anions or a mixture of all, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this mixture becomes a brown powder that, when mixed with gasoline, turns into a very sticky gel that burns like hell. 
Eventually, the formulation was improved and the government went to napalm B. This has polystyrene in it, shown here as the monomer with N as the polymerization. I also have one of my favorite organic chemistry abbreviations, taking an aromatic ring and just making it a circle with a slash through it. I like this one specifically because, well, I suck at drawing hexagons, as I'm sure you've seen if you've watched any single one of my videos. Napalm B also has benzene in it, which I did decide to draw out. You're welcome! The formulation itself is 50% polystyrene, 25% benzene, and yes, Virginia, I know how to count to 100, 25% gasoline. Dow made this for the government from 1965 through 69, and I found this formulation in a quaint little article in CNEN from 1966, describing how the price of the styrene monomer was gonna go up from nine cents a pound to, wait for it, 10 cents a pound. How cute is that? And that's napalm. Interesting chemist, really interesting chemistry, and an extremely interesting story. See you next time. You're an errand boy sent by grocery clerks to collect a bill!